Hey guys, we're gonna talk a little bit today about tailpipe tuning, just bad AFR info and people driving themselves nuts or tuning a bike based off improper data, which is just like a big epidemic of people thinking their bike runs like shit when it doesn't or tuning it leaner and richer than what it ultimately wants. So what we're gonna do today is a little exhaust sniffing test using our dyno in three different Positions. This is a uh, 04 RT51, with like a wide piped exhaust. It's a good specimen, low horsepower, something we could just test real quickly to show what happens when you do your tuning from the tailpipe versus the midpipe versus directly off each cylinder and the differences in horsepower. So this bike originally was tuned um, a couple other shops. Obviously I brought it in, look at it. This is one of our personal museum toys. And first things first, I noticed it's extremely lean out of the tailpipe and I said, perfect, let's do a test and show all three measures on the same bike with the same data. So a lot of people are getting sold dyno tunes for BMWs with that in the tailpipe. You're not getting the information that you need. So, very simply, we ran two channels here. We have channel one and channel two. Um, we also had channel two on the cylinder head below, and we got drastically different data. see here the reading from closer to the engine it was pretty much spot on it's right about 12 8 12 9 be honest with you they're pretty simple and similar up until this point but this massive lean hump 14 7 was false so what we did is we listened to the tailpipe sniffer and we gave it what it felt like to get it away from the 14.7 or whatever it was, the high RPM. And then we reread the exhaust sniff from midpipe. Now that lean bike is now extremely rich, has lost about four horsepower, 1150 across the board. That reading was false. By giving it what it asked for, we now, with a proper reading, are completely way off. So data is everything. Your procedure is everything. Your equipment is everything. Without doing this improperly, you're essentially pissing in the wind, wasting the customer's time, wasting the customer's money. There's so much more to these sniffers. There's, you can get bends, you can get holes. You can have issues down here on the box. You can have the vacuum set up incorrectly. You can have dirt in here. Our best measurement is not using these air fuel sniffer boxes at all and just extending the oxygen sensor to read directly in the bike it's really the best way i'm not a fan of these at all there's so much that can go wrong here every dyno can be different every dyno can give you you know if the maintenance isn't up to date on it getting the sensor up there is as accurate as you're going to get um it's the way it's done on just about any other way so pulling it through all of this variable is just asking for a problem unless you're tip top. So same way we do it on the Mustang dyno, sensor in the bung. If you don't have a bung, you make a bung. We have this nice rivet kit. Uh, it works really awesome. There's just so much misinformation and really poorly set up dyno rooms for extraction that someone had to break it down simple. Um, Intake and exhaust, as far as air, it's a whole nother other variable. Um, ram air, whole nother variable. Not saying we have that perfected down, hope to someday, but at least getting your mixture correctly is just 101, and without this done correctly, you shouldn't even bother tuning the bike. So what we noticed is people are tuning incorrectly all day in the dyno, 
and we prefer our air fuel measurements closer to the engine. So in the case of tuning around the problem, the bike picked up, and it's a very low, as you can see, this is an old archaic motorcycle. The difference between getting the top end fixed and running what was in there before was five horsepower. So that's a big delta on a 120 wheel horsepower motorcycle. So when we do our testing, originally when we build tunes, we start with this method and it requires a lot more work. Um, but guys, definitely hold your tuners to do this. People think that they have this short little exhaust can and my bike runs amazing. It's got a perfect air fuel chart on the, the dyno and then it's completely lean or rich on the street. So not everyone is gonna be able to get all four cylinder, two cylinder in this case, uh, tune. Not everyone has the time for it, but when you do your testing and you do your diagnostics, make sure you're doing it the right way. This is kind of a backup measurement. In some cases you have a single, you know, no Y pipe here, you know, high boost is the same way. 614 you don't have the best measurement and this will give you a ballpark but as you can see here it's like a full point and a half off that's never going to be accurate so what we like to do is we like to put sensors on bikes in the header always or this method which is a nice little kit that you can get with the dyno jet um and test them on the street for ram air and things like that when we're building our maps from scratch to go in our OTS kits. This way is just ultimately quick money. There are people that are getting their bike dyno at other shops. They're told that their bike's lean and it's tuned terribly and I'll help you out, bro. In reality, it was this line to start and they got this data. So when you're doing, if you actually care more about max power max number max optimization don't let someone give you a sample out of here and think it's 100 percent accurate it doesn't work in most cases and it sure as hell doesn't work on any of these y piped bikes the closest it is to the front the better per cylinder tuning even better if you have time and you know you're looking for that maximum optimization but I hope this is helpful because there's so much misinformation on the internet. There's so many people just saying this, that, and the other thing. Do it the right way the first time or don't do it at all. <laughs>